the benefits of getting medical treatment abroad on today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by FreshBooks. Accounting and bookkeeping mistakes destroy thousands of small businesses every single day. Bookkeeping doesn't have to be hard. Turn to the number one invoicing software for small businesses. Start for free today at servenomaster.com backslash FreshBooks. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now. Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author, Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host. The island I live on is well off the beaten path. Not only do I live in a developing country, I live in a rural part of the developing country on an island very far away from the nearest major city. Every day there's a flight between me and that major city. It's about a 40-minute flight, no problem. And in an emergency, you can even book a private plane. Anytime people have a medical problem, there is a local hospital that's okay. For something more serious, you go to the big city. Recently, I had to go meet a client, someone I was working with on a project in Thailand. While I was there, I decided it was a great opportunity to experience the medical care there. The great thing about Thailand is that they have tons of first-rate hospitals. They have an amazing selection of really, really high-quality hospitals. I decided to take advantage of that situation and see exactly what an experience would be like going for a checkup at one of these hospitals. I haven't been to a checkup in about two years, so I was a little bit worried. I needed a tune-up. I had lost, at that point, about 50 pounds. So I wanted to see where I could work next, where I needed to develop, what I needed to work on next as far as taking forward my body. What's amazing is the quality of experience I got for less than $200. I got a chest x-ray. I was scanned by seven or eight different doctors. They checked my eyes. They checked my ears. They checked my lungs. They checked everything. At the end of about two hours, I'd met with five doctors and about 12 nurses all over this hospital. You never get an experience like that when you go to the hospital for a checkup, when you go to your doctor for a checkup. They gave me so many more tests than I receive in America for 5% of the cost. Everyone was very knowledgeable. The English speaking was amazing. At the end of my whole experience, they took me for a final meeting with the doctor and she said my blood pressure was too high and that they were worried I would need to start going on blood pressure medications. I immediately said, you know what? I want to retake that test. We rechecked my blood pressure and turns out everything was fine. There's two important things about the story. The first is that medical care in other countries is phenomenal. As long as you look for a hospital that's JCI accredited, that means it has an international accreditation that's been tested and verified over three years, that it meets a certain level of standards that cross national borders. You don't want any domestic qualifications because any country, then they're just relative. What you want to know is it's absolute quality compared to worldwide. The second lesson to take from my experience is that you really need to understand your medical situation. I knew that something went wrong when I was taking that first blood pressure test. Because I started looking at the numbers, I got a little more nervous and I manually raised my blood pressure just by being nervous, by watching the numbers. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's getting higher and higher and higher. That happened to me because I'd just been writing a book about blood pressure for the last three weeks for a client. It was on my mind, it was distracting me, and it affected my test results. This happens to people in America all the time as well. People all over the world go in for a check at the doctor, and they get a bad blood pressure reading. It's very normal. This is why you want to ask for a reading at the beginning and the end of your session and really take three readings over the course of a day. I do consider that to be a little bit of a wake-up call for me that my blood pressure even had a little bit of a risk, so I bought a blood pressure machine myself that now lives in my house. I check my blood pressure every day. I exercise every day. I'm very conscious of that. I've taken more and more control of my medical destiny. When you're living in another country, when you decide to live somewhere as rural as I do, you have to make the decision to take control of your medical destiny. In America and in the West, we have this tendency to pass the buck. I'm not in charge of my health. That's my doctor's job. I'm not in charge of taking care of my body, extending my life. There's tons of medical care here to take care of me. Many people in America choose to have a bypass rather than exercise and diet. Rather than lose weight, we have open heart surgery. Open heart surgery is so common that it no longer even seems that overwhelming. It reminds me of in Apollo 13 when someone says, you're going to the moon, doesn't that seem routine? And he says, Tom Hanks, brilliant, there's nothing routine about going to the moon. And that's how I feel about heart surgery. If you're not proactive about your own health, you will run into problems and you'll run into more and more complexities as you go to other countries. When you're choosing where you're going abroad or you're going on a trip or you're making any plans, the smart move is to look in advance 
to see what the quality of medical care you'll receive is. I've been in many countries, and sometimes the countries we think are the best are actually the worst. Everyone I know who's ever had medical care in Japan has greatly regretted it. A friend of mine, her arm broke when we were living in Japan. They set her arm, and when she went home to her country in the West, they told her, they set your arm wrong, it'll never work right again unless we re-break it. They had to re-break her arm. I know someone else who got the flu in Japan, and they made a lot of mistakes with her medical care, and I had an experience what her doctor told me, that I was going to be dead in 24 hours unless he performed a procedure. Turns out he made it all up just as an insurance play, and in fact, the procedure nearly cost me my life. We think of Japan as the future, but when it comes to medical experience, they're very similar to England in the 1600s. I would never recommend going to any hospital in Japan. I don't know anyone who's ever had a good experience there. Now, they might have good hospitals that I've never heard of, but everyone I know has had a bad experience there, while everyone I know who went to Thailand had an amazing experience. Thailand is at the cutting edge for many procedures, many surgeries, and it's a really, really great place to go. Where I live, I'm not in Thailand. I live somewhere very rural in a country that's not that close, but I can be at the hospital I want in Thailand anytime I want within 12 hours. If I have a major emergency, the path will be a little bit different. My next door neighbor, four or five months ago, had a heart attack. He immediately was transported to the city that's about 40 minutes away by plane. Because I live on an island, there's no other way to get there. Now, there is a hospital on my island, but he made the right choice to go to the better hospital a little bit further away. They put a stent in his heart. He was back five days later, and it looked like nothing had changed. He was totally healthy, totally recovered. There is amazing medical care as long as you take a little bit of responsibility for what's happening. You want to check what's available, the quality of care available, the different experiences. When my son was born, I let my girlfriend decide where we were going to have him. She's the one who's going to be in the emergency room. She's the one who's in the process of having the baby. I gave her several choices. I said, we can have the baby here on this island. We can go to the neighboring island that has a bigger city and better hospitals. And we can even go to the big city that's the 40-minute flight away. It's a little more complex because you can't fly during the last few months of pregnancy. So we'd have to go there in advance, create a whole plan. But I was okay with that. I wanted to do the right thing. It's my girlfriend and my son. I want the best for both of them. She decided to have the child on our island. The entire experience... Two nights in the hospital, nurses up the wazoo, doctor, everything cost us a little under $450. My friend who had a baby in America, even with his massive insurance, ended up paying more than I did for the birth of his daughter. Prices are very different when you go to other countries. Now, I recently talked to my girlfriend about when we have our next child, we definitely want to have more. She doesn't want to reuse that hospital. And I totally understand why. I think she went a little too casual with this one. It wasn't the hospital that I would have chosen. I would have chosen one of the more expensive ones. But even if we go to a major city, the price isn't going to go above $600 for the same experience. Having a baby, having medical care in other countries is a lot cheaper. Many of the doctors here were trained in the West. They are trained at the same schools with the same quality of care using the same procedures as the doctors you're used to going to that charge 3, 5, 10, 20 times more money. Most people assume that medical care experiences doctors in developing countries and foreign countries are terrible. Medical care in America is not nearly as high as you think it is. Depending on different scales, America often ranks somewhere around 37th for medical care. That's not exactly the top of the pile. When you go to other countries, you discover that a lot of your beliefs were misinformation. I grew up thinking that doctors in America were amazing because of capitalism. Then I went to England, where I had a major incident. I went to the hospital, through the emergency room, had an entire experience where I ended up meeting one of the best doctors in the nation, and it cost me nothing. I assumed that socialized medicine would be garbage until I experienced it. A lot of our beliefs, a lot of the things we think we know about medical care, traveling, and experience, they're just false information. Experience and research beats everything else. You might decide you never want to go to a doctor in Asia, you don't want to go to a doctor in South America, you only want an American or European doctor, and that's fine. Procedures in America still cost more than 10 times more than the same procedure in Europe. You can go to an amazing private clinic in Switzerland or Sweden or Germany, wherever you want in Europe, and you'll save at least 60% on the cost. You can fly first class both ways and still spend less than just going to a doctor in America. Don't make assumptions, do research. Wherever you decide to live, the first step is to understand their medical system. How does their insurance system work? Do you need insurance? Does travel insurance work there? Will they even accept it? Many places you go, you have this traveler's insurance that covers any medical problem. Guess what? That doesn't work. They don't accept it. What actually happens, you go to the hospital, you got a broken leg on your ski trip, you have to pay for everything yourself out of pocket, and then the insurance policy eventually reimburses you if you do all your paperwork correctly and make no mistakes. Trusting in... The system you come from is fine. We want to take the time 
with our serve no master mindset to understand how things work in other countries. When you are looking at a country to visit or move, start by looking at the infrastructure of their medical system. How does their medical system rate worldwide? Do they have hospitals that are JCI accredited? Are they internationally accredited? There are three JCI accredited hospitals near me and I know exactly where they are. So if I have to do a major procedure, if I need something big, I know where to go to get the best care available. If I have time, I know where I can go to even better hospitals one country away. Now, most of us, most people in America actually live a little bit rural. We don't all live in the big city. I can get better medical care here than I could in the bush in Alaska in the middle of nowhere. Relative to where you would live somewhere rural in America, I can get amazing medical care here. It's not a problem. Now, one thing that's very important, you have to change your lifestyle and your mindset when you move, when you move to another country. I live somewhere where hospitals aren't that available. I'm not five minutes away from the emergency room. I live 30 minutes away from the hospital on my island. I live an hour from the airport, which is another hour from the city where there's big hospitals. So I'm three or four hours away from a major hospital. So for any type of major accident or major incident, I either have to do a lot of waiting or go to the local clinic. There are limitations for emergency, emergency medical care. That's the real area of limitation. Most disease in America, most health problems in America, most of our causes of death in America are preventable. They're almost all caused by smoking, drinking, and obesity. If you take control of your health destiny, you can extend your life, you can increase the quality of your life, and you can make major changes. At an airport last year, they weighed me and they said I weighed 272 pounds. They weigh everyone when you go in a smaller airplane to make sure the weight's balanced between the two sides and the front and back of the plane. The plane was small enough and I was heavy enough that I could have tipped the, tipped the wing over and crashed us if they didn't know where to put me. When I saw that I was 272 pounds at five foot nine, I really realized I had to make a change. I had to make a dramatic change. And I pushed my weight down. I've lost about 50 pounds and I still need to lose a lot more. I need to get down to between 180 and 200. I know that. Right now I'm in the 220s or so. It's not nearly good enough. I've hit a little bit of a plateau because we moved house and a bunch of things are going on. Recently, me and my girlfriend have started the second phase, my second push to push down that next 50 which involves me riding my exercise bike every day, which involves me checking my blood pressure one or two times a day. We're really on top of it because you can't trust someone else with your life. So many people get overweight, don't take care of their health, and the only thing keeping them alive is taking pills every day, going to the doctor every day, being near a hospital. You're not really in control of your life, and you let these things happen that are very devastating. When I was younger, about five or six years ago, I had a major heart problem. Through the series of events that involved a lot of stress, some financial problems as far as business partners and projects I was working on, all came to a head. I ended up in the emergency room with a major heart incident. Having stared down the eye and thinking that it was it, that I was going to die in my early 30s of a heart attack, and seeing the look in the doctor's eye in the emergency room, I felt real fear. I had to change something. They told me that for the rest of my life, I would take three heart pills every day that for the rest of my life, the only thing keeping me alive would be this tether, this chain, these pills. And if I ran out of pills, I would die. I do not want to give control of my life to someone else. I don't want to live in a situation where I can't get to the doctor, I can't get to the pharmacy, or there's some type of natural disaster and there's no access to a pharmacy. I simply die. I don't want to do that. I started training. I worked out every day for the next six months and weaned myself off those pills. With a massive series of tests at the end, the doctor confirmed that I didn't have to take those heart pills anymore. He was astounded. Sometimes we get locked into this idea that the answer to every problem is a pill. 70% of Americans take a pill every month. 50% take two to stay alive. And even more Americans, there's a large percentage that take more than three medications every month to stay alive. We're dependent on medications. The pharmacy companies control us. And we don't realize that oftentimes we can solve the problem by changing our lifestyle. If we go to the core of the problem, we can fix the problem rather than the symptoms. Our fear of moving to another country is often because we're used to being coddled. The majority of Americans are overweight or obese. Something around 90 million Americans now have pre-diabetes or diabetes caused by eating habits. Not the diabetes type 1 that you're born with, but the kind you develop because you overeat and don't take care of yourself. We're so unhealthy, and that's very limiting. When you are overweight, when you have massive health problems, Visiting another country becomes scarier and scarier and scarier. I wouldn't live where I do right now if I still smoked, if I was still massively overweight, if I was older and older and still having these problems. I made a decision when I moved here. I said, I have to take control of my health destiny. No one is responsible for my health anymore. 
So I've begun exercising every day, taking care of my health. I've lost a lot of weight. I still need to lose more because I want to get to that perfect level. I'm doing pretty good. I'm halfway to my goal, and this is the point where it's very tempting to quit and very tempting to plateau out, but I'm not going to let that happen. Me and my girlfriend just had a big talk last night where I explained to her that I really need her support. I get distracted when I'm working. I'm recording these podcasts. I'm working on a new book. I get very distracted by work, and I can go and work 12 hours because I love what I do without exercising. This morning, she woke me up. And I'll be honest, I was not happy. And she said, get on the exercise bike. She pushed me out of the room. Instead of letting me do my morning work, she made me ride the bike. Now, I was of two minds. Part of me wanted to tell her to shut up and stop, and I don't want to do it. But the other part of me knows I need that pressure sometimes. It helps to have another person who's really helping you. It helps to have someone supporting you 100%. I hate riding the exercise bike by myself. But when I'm out there, it's me, my girlfriend, our two kids, and the dog. It turns into a bunch of fun and an experience. Everyone's playing and talking. We play music. My daughter starts dancing next to the bike and having a blast. All of that... We set up that infrastructure to make it enjoyable. Suddenly, riding the bike isn't so bad. I don't hate riding it on my own. I'm actually okay about riding it on my own, but riding it with them is so much more fun. I live on an island where there's a lot of exercise opportunities. I could surf every day, kayak every day. The great thing about having my exercise bike is that I do it, I start my day, and then later on, if I go out and hit the waves or something else, it really just doubles it and gives me amazing benefits. Having something I can do at home. I don't like to leave the house a lot right now. I have a brand new baby. We've got this new puppy. I like to be close to home, but I do love surfing and kayaking. We're going to do that more and more. We're going through a little bit of a transition phase with having two babies and a new dog and all these other things. Having a baseline, having someone support me who understands my goals is really valuable. She checks my blood pressure every day with our little machine. She writes it down in a little notebook to track things. We track my blood pressure when I'm exercising, when I'm not exercising, when I'm sitting, when I'm working, when I'm stressed, when I'm not stressed. Most of us don't even know how to check our own blood pressure. Now, I know how to do it with a sphygmometer and a stethoscope. I used to work as an EMT. I was a volunteer EMT for a year when I was in college. I went through that all of that training. I went through all of that training, so I know how it works, but we got the electronic one. And it cost, I think, $20, maybe $30. It allows us to monitor my health all the time. Many people who have health problems are a little overweight. We don't even buy simple devices that can help us take control of our destiny. We wait until we go to the doctor to get that reading. But your doctor can make mistakes. Your doctor can mess up things. You can buy almost any piece of medical equipment on Amazon now. Start taking responsibility for your health, for your medical situation, and amazing things can happen. There are really great opportunities there. And if you're looking for someone to coach you or someone to help you, I'll post a link in the notes for this video to a really great fitness coach that actually helped me a lot when I was going through a transition phase at my last house. Now my gym setup's a little bit different, but I think he's really great. I wasn't able to find a good personal trainer on the island where I live right now. I tried with a bunch of different people, really didn't work out. So I found someone online who provided me with great coaching, great support, and really helped me overcome and cross my last plateau. He pushed me from 112 kilos down to 102 kilos, really helped me break through that barrier. If you need help, it's okay to ask for it. It's okay to make that decision, but you have to realize your health is in your own hands. By cutting down the weight, by taking control of your body, you can extend your lifespan by 30 or 40 years. I'm responsible for my health. I'm responsible for my family. I'm just at the beginning of the big phase of my life and my career. The things I do have changed. Now, I have also stopped high-risk behaviors. I used to free climb, which sounds insane for a fat guy, but when I lived in Wales, one of the other countries I love living in, I used to do free climbing on cliffs that were about 150, 200 meters straight up. And looking back, that's so crazy because one slip and I would die. All of these experiences and living on the edge and being an extreme sports guy, those are things I enjoyed a little bit of before I started having kids. But now I think about in my decision calculus, how it affects the people around me. My family needs me to support them. And I certainly don't want my kids living off my life insurance when I'm gone in a month and I don't get to see them grow up. Here, some people brag about the size of the waves they ride. And people want to ride 12 foot, 15 foot, 20 foot waves, really serious waves. And then people fall and they snap their spine or they break their arm. I don't want to live that close to the edge. I ride enjoyable waves that I have a blast on. I can do some moves, but it's nothing like competition level stuff. It's nothing where I might crash and break my arm and then not be able to support my family or get knocked underwater and drown. Just a few days ago, one of my neighbors who's always bragging about being a big wave surfer told me this story. He's like, there's an amazing surf spot I went to. You've got to go sometime. 
And then he proceeds to tell me a story about how he almost died there. He got trapped on the reef underwater and only because he can hold his breath for five minutes did he survive. He was under the water for more than four minutes before he escaped. That doesn't make me want to surf there. That doesn't make me want to experience that. I don't want to live that close to the edge anymore. If you're younger, you think you can live forever and you really live on the edge and you do all these crazy things. You want to slow down that living on the edge idea, that living on the edge experience when you start having kids, when you start traveling and doing things. You want to find the right balance that fits for your lifestyle, that fits for where you are. Now, if you're single with no kids, live on the edge as much as you want. That's fine. If you're older, your experience might be more about what I first talked about, how you need to take control of your health. You need to take control of your physical condition. You need to take more and more control of your prescriptions. I've been doing a lot of research in the medical field for the past year because I've been working on some projects for clients, writing about that, and really just doing a lot of research and reading a lot of scientific studies about topics like diabetes, hypertension, hair loss, obesity, problems with your heart. All of those things matter to me because I was fat for a long time. Two years ago, I quit smoking. I was coughing blood all the time from my smoking. I smelled like garbage. I was gross. And I looked in the mirror one day and said, no more. I got to stop. And I haven't had a cigarette since. If you're in that type of situation where you're addicted to something like cigarettes or drinking that you know is killing you, it can be very hard to break free. We traditionally quit by looking at it and saying, I want to do it, but I'm not allowed to anymore. And that's where temptation exists. That's where it's hard. The way I quit smoking is I replaced the desire with disgust. I think smoking is disgusting. I think it's really gross. When someone smokes near me, I think they're disgusting. I changed my core belief because I know that's how I can save my life. I don't have that temptation to smoke because I've changed my belief about it. I see it as gross. I want to stay far away from it. I don't like the smell. I don't want my kids to be around it. I don't like any of those things. That was a very hard mindset shift for me because I used to think smoking was cool and awesome. But I changed from a pro-smoking guy to totally anti-smoking. And in fact, over the two years since I've quit smoking, several times I've had a dream where I smoked in the dream. And I woke up devastated, so upset, almost crying. The strongest nightmares I have now are about smoking because I never want to go back. I hated the thought of it, the thought of dying young, giving up my life. If you're young, you think you're going to live forever. You can smoke and do all the things you want and do all the partying and crazy living you want but it catches up to you. The more you want to travel, the more you want to experience the world and the further off the beaten path you want to go, the more seriously you have to take your own health. You can't trust hospitals, doctors, anyone else. Even in America, a large number of people die every single year from mistakes. Hospitals make a lot of mistakes. And if you think about it, it's a mathematical inevitability. Millions of people go to the hospital. Millions of procedures are performed. Millions of tests are run. Statistically, there's always going to be a percentage of mistakes. It's impossible to have a no mistake experience when millions and millions and millions of events are happening. The more you can disconnect yourself from the need for medical care, the better. The key steps in the process are understanding the medical situation of a country you're going to, understanding what type of insurance, backup care you need to set up to make sure you're covered, knowing where all the proper medical facilities are near where you live. Do you need to be near a hospital? Do you need to be near a doctor? Do you need different types of care all the time? What exactly do you need? With those pieces of information, you can determine where you can live and the options available to you. A little bit of knowledge can go a long way when it comes to taking care of your health. Become proactive, take action, and realize that medical care in most countries in the world is actually amazing. You can find tier one hospitals better than your local hospital that charge 5%. And when you go in for a procedure, you have six nurses and two doctors. Everyone's giving you their attention. And that feels really, really good. Take control of your medical destiny and don't let it keep you from going abroad. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Serve No Master. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back tomorrow with more tips and tactics on how to escape that rat race. Head over to servenomaster.com forward slash podcasts now for your chance to win a free copy of Jonathan's bestseller, Serve No Master. All you have to do is leave a five-star review of this podcast. See you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the Serve No Master podcast. Email your questions to podcast at servenomaster.com and your question with my answer might appear in the next episode.